So now is the time where I asked the lads for their final thoughts on the match, starting with Rich. Yeah, it was. Um, we've spoken about monkeys on backs and and, and getting them off, uh, and this was one of those matches. Um, it, it's happened previously uh, where we've had, you know, these types of teams that become sort of bogeys for us. And there's only one way to deal with it, and that, that is that you need to work your way through it. Uh, and this match presented us with that opportunity. Um, everything that we've done wrong that has allowed La Rochelle, uh, because they get a vote in the match, despite what some people think, you know, the opposition always get a vote <laughs> on how the match is going to go. Uh, so everything that has been good about La Rochelle and an awful lot has been good about La Rochelle. You know, let's let's not go away from that. They are an excellent team. They may not be firing on all cylinders this this season, but but they are certainly a very very composed team. Um, and we had to psychologically more than anything else, we had to win that match yesterday. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, my expectations going into the match weren't high. I just wanted to, you know, I, I thought, perhaps defeatist or not, but um, I thought if we, if we get losing bonus point, you know, it, it, it's a good point away from home at, at La Rochelle. Um, but then as the, as the match started progressing, you start thinking, well, hang on, you know, psychological, psychologically, we need to beat these people. We need to beat them. And... Like I said earlier in, in, in the pod, it, it's it's how you beat them. We basically beat them at their own game. And it was all the skullduggery and all the defense and all the wonderful shithousery that, that goes on that not a lot of people see, obviously. Um, because that's one of the bases of La Rochelle's success over the last few years. It was Saracens uh, as well, previous to that. Uh, and you need to be able to deal with that. You need to be able to deal with that, and you need to be able to overcome it. Um, and as, as you yourself have just said uh, about Marseille, and I, I know Tom and I were there as well uh, for that one, and it was that sense of inevitability. I never felt that sense of inevitability in this match, and I think that is the difference. That is the difference. Our defense, there was an awful lot more dog in that defense, there was an awful lot more gumption in that defense. And I think, and, and you know, this sounds like two uh, fighting cockerels standing up to each other, but that's pretty much what it was, uh, if, if, if you think about it. And we came out on top, and we had to come out on top. Uh, we did it within the boundaries of, of the law, primarily, uh, the, although not exclusively. Um, but, you know... Uh, that was probably the game that Leinster needed to have. And we've probably needed to have that game in these stages of competitions rather than facing these games in finals. Because we would have been an awful lot better for it come finals day. So extremely pleased, obviously. Absolutely. Tom? Yeah, well, I suppose first of all, this to sort of put the passion back into it as well. It was absolutely feckin' brilliant. Like this was a proper European tussle, one where you're sort of at the edge of your seat watching the game and you're glued to every little rock and every little one of those games where you do not keep as a supporter, you do not lose focus and you watch every little moment. And this game was full of big moments and little moments and everything in between. And and Leinster came and came on the right side of a lot of them. Um and let's, you know, this was a you know, apart from some of the selections, maybe this was a full strength. Um, La Rochelle team. We mentioned Gregory Aldridge was the only one that's missing, but that's that's their Heineken Cup team. There, you know, th th there's nobody else missing, and we're able to bring on a lot of decent subs. Um, I think from a La Rochelle point of view, I know Rich has touched on Lancer from a La Rochelle point of view. They struck me as a team, and I think Rich maybe touched on this in the first the, um, the first part of the pod. They struck me as a team that they they seem they seem to play with a bit of spite and a bit of bit of venom. Um, and a bit of dirt for a team that looked like they had lost three games in a row, and they were had it, it seemed like they were playing with something to prove. It was, they were on their own pitch. They definitely um, didn't play with their heads in that first twenty minutes, in that first half. Um, they were lucky not to get more yellow cards. Um, it looks like it looked like they were trying to bury 
Leinster psychologically uh, before the grave was dug. And unfortunately, you know, you need to get the shovel out and do the hard work first before you can start throwing us down there because that's that's what didn't happen. Um, Rich touched on, on, on sort of the strong points of the Leinster game. Um, our line-out defence was superb. Our mall defence was superb. I thought our counter rucking was fantastic. I thought just our doggedness around every ruck and willing to make a fight for every single ball was 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 superb and even the guys that came on like Natai, Josh, etc., uh, replaced guys who were really good game like Will Connors was you know he announced him back himself back on on European stage. I thought he had a fantastic performance. I thought Harry Bourne was really solid and good for the first 40 minutes and Kieran came on and did a great job as well. So it was a really squad thing that 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 you know and you do need all you know with these 2022 20, players going down to the likes of La Rochelle. And we, you know, we did it without James Lowe. We did it without uh, Tyke Furlong and Jack Conan. Um, so they're all positives too, as we sort of add depth to the squad. Um, I think Rich is right. Psychologically, losing four in a row after throwing the kitchen sink at La Rochelle um, wouldn't have ended Leinster's European season, far from it. But it would have left a doubt in our mind if we'd met them again in the later stages of the competition. And I think that's the big thing. They can now go to that well you know, if uh, Will Skelton is fecking grinning at you, knowing he's got one over you, well, you can grin back this time and go, well, no, mate, we got one back off you. So he maybe he mightn't grin as much the next time. I might focus on playing a bit of rugby um, the next time rather than just grinning and trying to shithouse people. But uh, that's the important part of it. From the Irish Shell point of view as well, they now have to go to Stormers in Cape Town. They decided, you know, I don't care about algorithms. They decided to play Leinster at home and go to Cape Town. And it's sort of backfired now um, because it's probably about the worst trip you could pick after a game like that, going full strength against Leinster in a really wet physical game and losing and then having to fly all the way to Cape Town to play a rested Stormers team because they sent a arrested team up to Leicester and, and, and nearly got a result in fairness to them. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that develops over the over the next, uh, this weekend coming. But look, enough about La Rochelle. I just, you know, f- to finish on a positive, you know, I was a bit like Rich. I, it was the first time in, I'd say, in about five years I didn't feel at least 50-50 or confident about winning the game. It was that drop below the 50% mark of how well we, we how well our team would do. But um, I shouldn't really doubt them. I think it was it was they 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 they, they showed another massive win. Uh, as I mentioned somewhere else, I think in Leo's last thirty four pool games in the Heineken Cup, um, they've now won thirty just with a couple of defeats. One one point loss to 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 um, to Toulouse in a pool game, uh, and then a forfeited game against Montpellier. Or sorry, a, a bonus point loss against uh, Montpellier down in um, down in Montpellier. But like to win thirty out of thirty four games is just unbelievable, uh, considering the grounds. And and I suppose uh, the last couple of semi finals and finals that we've had, we've you know a little bit of doubt are creeping into his our mind. And um, but I suppose we shouldn't doubt them. They're they're they're, they're, they're still a lot left in that team, and and they showed they showed it against the champion team the weekend. And I I just it was. Uh, a really heartwarming display, like bloody hell. It was one of those games you just you just want to get up and have a few points of Guinness afterwards in celebration. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we were talking about percentages there. I thought you were actually reading my notes because that's what I was actually going to say. I haven't like I'm a I'm a superstitious sports fan. I never want to. I never feel hundred percent confident that even Leinster are going to win any game because literally anything can happen. But mm. This is the first. This is the first game, and I'm including all of the last three matches against La Rochelle. Yeah. I was I was confident going into reasonably confident going into all three of those matches, um, but this was the first time I was like, okay, this is one where where we we could be on the back foot, where we could, you know, everything about it, even those conditions at the kickoff, I thought I thought might you know might work against us, but. Another facet of Leinster's play over the years, even the years when we'd go into Europe having won games 50 nil or, you know, 50 burgers week in, week out, you can, you can see the way they were able to raise the game. You can see the, the, the difference in the mindset in the play going from um, the URC into Europe 
and you can see th- that they they do go to that next level again, and they did it again this time, and they just pulled out a performance from start to finish with tactics, everything defense. It was just all around. You you, you noted all the individual performances, Connors, uh, Baird, Keenan, all them uh, throughout the game. That but it was it was the team elements as well, and they they just had everything right, and uh, we took advantage of what was going on on their side of the ball as well, and got the result. It was amazing. It was amazing performance. I, I, and, uh, I mentioned somewhere else. I thought it was the maybe Claremont away back in 2017 where I felt the same. But I, I think in, in truth, I haven't felt like a nervous or that below that 50% mark really since we played Toulon in a quarterfinal down in Toulon or the semifinal in Marseille the following year, I think we played them um, the time we lost as well in extra time. They were the two times I definitely felt like we were underdogs. And, you know, maybe I'm getting old, but I, 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 I this was the first time I felt it. Um, since then, that sort of all right, okay, maybe we're not just even fifty, but they they they're we're, we're always happy to be wrong in those cases. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, listen, lads, that's brilliant. We're going to leave it there. Many thanks again to Rich and Tom for joining me, and I hope we have you both on again soon. Thanks, lads. Thanks, guys. Cheers, Jeff. Cheers, Rich. And uh, that's it for now. So next weekend sees Leinster back at the RDS for the visit of Premiership leader Sale Sharks. So we will, of course, be giving it the full harp and treatment with a wrap recording on Saturday, on Sunday, plus a preview on Friday. Just stay tuned to all our social media channels. The links as ever are in the program notes. In the meantime, stay safe, everyone. Slan.